the thing. An anaconda, the reason they get so big is so that they can latch onto their prey. I mean, they got to eat, and they'll pull a deer down, wrap around it, they'll crush the life out of it, and then they'll swallow it whole. So for me, I had to, the first thing was surviving the crush. So we had to make the carbon fiber suit that would protect my rib cage, protect the structure of my body. So, because without that, I would literally just be crushed by this snake. And then, if, you know, if we were successful and the snake actually ate, we're saying that I had to be able to breathe while inside the snake. So we had experts making this suit. So we had, an, a, the, the suit was uncrushable. We were testing for how much pressure the anaconda would be squeezing with. They even made me swallow a pill so it was transmitting my vital signs. We had my wife and a team of experts making sure that I was healthy, that I was safe, that my temperature wasn't going too high, that my heart rate wasn't going too high. And we had vets standing on site to watch for the snake, make sure the snake was healthy during all this, which snakes eat crocodiles with, with claws and teeth and spikes. So they can, they're tough animals. I was, it was a smooth suit with a kid from Brooklyn inside. It was fine. And the last thing I saw was that mouth come straight at my face and everything went black and it just felt like someone just socked me in the, in the forehead. And then I just, once you're in it, you just, you get wrapped up and you feel that crush and so you got a 250 pound snake rolling you up is, is a strange sensation. What was it like being eaten by a snake? Being wrapped up and constricted and, and you know, what you're, you're, you're gasping for air through this, through this suit and you have this snake crushing down on you. So it was, it was, my brain was going back and forth between this is awesome and being a little bit freaked out, you know. Well, I mean, the, the biggest concern all along is making sure that the snake was, because if we did this to raise awareness about the snakes and about the jungle, and then we ended up killing a snake, I mean, well, that would, that would be horrible. Um, so every step along the way was just making sure that the snake is safe, you know. So we even said that, you know, once it got over my shoulders, once it gets over your shoulders, it's proven that it can eat you. So the idea was one, once, it, once I get halfway inside, that we'd, we'd call it, we'd, you know, anytime you spook a snake, they'll regurgitate. They do it all the time. If they're eating and another predator comes by, they have to release their meal so they can get away. So we knew that once I was in, all we had to do was have some of the crew come in and the snake would push me right out. So it's a very common thing. We didn't, we didn't do anything to the snake that was extraordinary. Um, for the snake, it was just a normal day. I mean, PETA came out and said, this is animal abuse in the highest degree or something like that. Um, they actually didn't have any information about the show. But what I thought was cool was that so many people came out in support of a snake. You know, I've worked with snakes all over the world in rainforest areas, and they're always the villain. People are always killing snakes. They don't understand snakes. So to see 35,000 people in a week come out to support snakes, I was like, yes, that's awesome. But the conversation that starts is if you, if you care about a snake that might have been hurt for a TV show but wasn't, what about the environment that they live in and the thousands of other species that they share that with? It's being burnt to the ground every day. That's animal abuse in the highest degree. So all those people, it's sort of taking that misplaced frustration and, and talking about what's actually happening. And I think that's what's so brilliant about this show. Good point. How is the snake doing now? The snake is alive and well. She's very healthy. And I'm sure she's looking forward to the next time she can kick me around.